Hi, welcome. Um, my name is Dale Lynch. This is our uh, our first series with uh, Australian Golf Advice and Discussion Group, which is quite a significant name, isn't it? Uh, now we're going to do this every Monday. Uh, initially, it'll be a, a Q and A on some of your uh, your favourite uh, golf questions. Uh, I said I'm Dale Lynch of uh, Ban Lynch McDade. We're based at uh, Yarraban Golf here in uh, sunny Melbourne. Uh, and we're here, as I said, on the first cab off the ring to answer a few of your questions. And the first question I have here is a very interesting one. It says, uh, what's more beneficial, a couple of holes after work or a bucket of balls? Um, interesting question in as much as it really depends on where you are with your game. I must say that you, uh, one thing about golf, you can't play too many holes of golf. However, what does happen is, uh, particularly for those of you that may be taking, uh, taking lessons, if there's something that you're working on in your golf swing in your game, the bucket of balls is the most important part. Uh, you then work on what you need to work on on the range, work it out, get that sorted, and then you actually go and play a couple of holes to really test it out. And then you find out how you're going, and then you assess that. Then that actually enables you then to arrange what your next practice session will be based on the holes you play. So in reality, ideally, it is a combination of both. Um, next question, again, another great question here. It's an interesting one, which is, What's the most important thing? Is it getting fitted for golf clubs or the lessons? Um, now, I, I actually uh, started my career once I stopped playing as a, a club fitter first before getting into teaching, so I can talk to it from both areas. And ideally, again, if you're really keen on your golf, the lessons are the most important part. Uh, and the, one of the reasons for that is that if you're going to get fitted for, let's say, a swing that isn't really what you want, you're going to get a set of golf clubs fit of that particular swing and then if you then wish to improve your game and you then start swinging the club differently and you get a different ball flight, the set of clubs that you've been fitted with actually doesn't match what you're actually currently or wanting to do. And in reality, it can actually make it more difficult to make the change if the clubs don't fit the direction which you're going. So it's far better to take your lessons first and then a good coach will then understand your game, understand your swing and say, based on what we're doing here and where we're going, Right, this is the set of golf clubs that I recommend, and I guess my end is a bit of a story. Is that with club fitting as a, as a coach, uh, I worked on tour for the best part of 15 years in the PJ Tour in the States, and at times it was very, very frustrating that we're working with players, and there was one player in particular I was working with, um, and he had a lot of difficulties. Bad shot was a hook, so um, I'm working his golf swing to eliminate the hook. The club fitters are actually fitting for a driver that actually stops the ball from hooking, so. What was happening is that the swing that I wanted to make wouldn't work with the club, it was the anti-hook because it wasn't matching what I was actually trying to do. So at times for us as coaches, we do get in a bit of conflict with people fitting golf clubs rather than actually coming through the, the teacher first. So again, long answer to that question, but the lessons are the most important part. Um, and then three, is a swing that hits all the correct positions important? Or is it only what happens at impact and what the numbers show that matters? So. That's an interesting question. I think there's probably a little bit of, bit of track man background here, I think. And it's a, a good one that says, is the swing that hits all the correct positions important? And I think that the video camera for us as teaching has been a fantastic tool, but it also creates problems because when people talk in those that language about hitting correct positions, people tend to think that the swing has to be in a position mode. When in reality, the, the positions that we can talk about using video are all part of a natural balance flowing motion. So there is no such thing as actually hitting positions. And I think whoever was asking that question, if that's your mindset, you probably need to actually change that a little bit. You're not trying to hit positions. Um, and what happens at impact is key, there's no question. Everything you're doing in your golf swing is about impact. But the more efficient your golf swing is, the better your impact position is likely to be. Uh, and the numbers, I, again, I'm assuming that's probably a bit of a track man background there. Uh, the numbers will show, yes, but the numbers only show what you've actually done back here and what the result is down through there. So you've got to learn to swing the golf club first, get the numbers second. People do make the mistake of actually standing there and trying to organise a golf swing, getting the numbers, the numbers first. So I hope that answers your question. But the swing, as I said, the most important part of that answer is the swing is a natural flow and balance motion. All right, and number four, again, terrific question here, is at what age should I actively encourage my kids to play golf? So we have a bit of a changing field over, I guess, the last 20 years or so where um, people 
tended to pick a golf club up probably at about 12, 13, 14. Um, Greg Norman didn't start playing golf until he was actually 15. And we got the new phenomenon with Tiger Woods, who was you know, going to be a superstar at four years of age and probably Rory McIlroy similarly. So we have this quite a dispersion now of when top great players have actually started golf. I really don't believe that it's necessary for kids to pick up the golf club and be serious golfers at a young age. Um, you know, to actually encourage if, if, you, if your kid likes to swing a golf club and hit a golf ball at any age, encourage them to do it, don't force them. But I guess the most important thing is make sure when your children aren't playing golf that they take up another activity. Um, golf is a one-dimensional, one-sided sport. And it's very, very important for the development of their golf game later on that they have a background in other sports, particularly two-sided sports, the basketball situation, the soccer with both feet, all those sorts of things actually really help the young golfer develop their game later on. So what I would do, I would encourage them, whatever age that they're keen to do it, let them do it. If they lose interest at some point, just let them go, don't worry about it, and send one into play. As long as they're involved in other activities, they can always take up that golf caper a little bit later on. All right, so I have a 10-year-old driver. Are those new models worth the money to upgrade? Um, the answer to that is if you're keen on your golf, most definitely. It goes back to that question before, but make sure you get it properly fitted. But the drivers these days are way better than they were 10 years ago. All right, so that's the end of our, our Q&A uh, for this week. I hope that's answered your questions and uh, you learn a little bit from that. Okay, so uh, this is the first of our uh, instructional videos um, for your team. And we have Rowan, as kind enough sent his, his swing through for us to, to look at. A, um, a six handicap, uh, has a very athletic swing, but his biggest problem, he tells us, is that he struggles with inconsistency um, with the heel strike. So for mine, is that when, when I'm looking at the, at the swing, is it I said it's a very athletic swing. Um, and the posture and things, obviously worked on some very, very good things there, um, assuming with a coach, because a lot of very, very good patterns in the, the swing itself. Um, Club moves quite well. I, I guess for me, and I'm going to—I've sort of already had a bit of a sneak preview of the swing. Is that my first thing? Is I'm looking at the top of the backswing there, Rowan. Is that your arms are quite close together there, um, and that to me indicates there's a fair bit of tension going on. Because generally, when the arms are relaxed, they should be. The arms will naturally separate. And I'm sort of mentioning that now because really, for the instructional part as we we go through it, um, that might be a bit of an important key for us. Um, we go through from the top, we'll see again looking at it that the, the plane the club comes on through the downswing is in great shape, really good and it's a very very athletic motion. We get the strike and the ball, looks quite good, a little bit of compensation going on. Uh, noticeable thing is now the path the club is travelling on the through swing. I'm going to stop this if I can just as the club first appears for us on the right there. So. The club, if you can, I'm not sure if the video will pick it up, but your golf club, when we first see it on the way through, is actually appearing by your left ear. Um, where in reality is it that nice position you had on the on the way down here, where it was nicely on plane, that club should actually then swing through and be on the same matching plane on the follow through. So that little bit of tension I spoke about at the top of the backswing, right? is highlighting what's going on going on through here. So our follow through is not matching our downswing and the way those hands are moving in that direction is actually what is causing that, that inconsistency in that heel strike for you. So I'm gonna move away from the desk and then just give you a couple of drills to do and have a bit of a chat to you about some of the feels you might experience. 
Okay, Ron, so we've, we've moved from analysing the swing on the, the computer and now we're sort of looking at a bit of an explanation and, and hopefully a couple of drills that will be successful for you. And as I'm standing here just sort of chatting to you on the, uh, the camera and I'm just relaxing and just letting the club really just move in a nice balanced position, you can actually see that the club naturally wants to move on this, on this plane. And that's the plane that the club should work through in the golf swing. Now what we see with your golf club is that through impact here we have you stretching out in this direction and your club actually appearing this way. Right. Now I'm not sure whether it's just tension through your hands and arms or maybe you're trying to keep the club going straight. All right. However the club needs to move on its natural arc so the club will move through this position here on the way through, this way, not this way. And a little key for you, once you've done a bit of practice, if I let the club move through the ball correctly this way here, is that when I finish the swing, the club will be cradled really nice in balance in my hands and arms. If you look at your follow through, because you have the club moving this way in that tension, your follow through is that we finish up in this position here where your elbows get a long way apart on the way through. And what will be a very important key for you, Ryan, as you're practicing this, is to really relax your hands and arms. My suggestion is for you to practice some shots with half three quarter swings, even with some irons, even with the ball teed up, and just allow the club to move through its natural plane. So on the way through, the shaft will actually be pointing back towards the target line. And said so this will actually match your natural motion. On the way down, your club moves from here. We need to allow that club to mirror. through that side of the swing. But some half three quarter shots, keep those arms relaxed and let that blend into your driver's swing for us.